Evidently, it's time for the dead to go on. We are getting ready to put our equipment on stage. It is all on risers, but our gear is so heavy it breaks the wheels off the risers and we have to move everything in by hand. It takes forever. In the meantime, incessant nightmare announcements are coming over the PA. Please do not rob the hot dog stands. Please, everyone, get off the tower. Someone just fell. Don't take the brown acid. There's bad acid out there, so don't take it. Ominous announcements. No music. Everybody scrambling around. All of us looking tense and horrible and uptight. And then, that's right, folks, it's time for the Grateful Dead to go on. I make the mistake of thinking, what more can happen? And then suddenly, as if someone pulled a cord, darkness falls. Oh, well, time for the light show. That should perk us up. But no sooner is the screen in place than the wind picks up and the stage, this is the largest stage you've ever seen, stands 30 feet above the ground, starts vibrating and physically vibrating, quaking. Our beautiful giant screen has turned into a sail, is moving the stage through the sea of mud like the good ship Mary Celeste. It's starting to slide. It is. Uh oh, tipping over. And Dick and my brother has to climb up the mizzen mast and slash the screen with a bowie knife. Not a good omen, Captain. The band's petrified. Risers, the light and dark thing, the terrible announcements, the stage tape on its own like that. And in the middle of their very first number, this crazy guy we know runs out into the middle of the stage and starts flinging acid off the stage. After all those announcements, okay, his acid is purple, but it looks brown. Oh, no, it's the brown acid, the acid you're not supposed to take. To make matters worse, the dead are playing horribly. They just cannot get started, can't get it right. Not one song. And the sound is awful, and it's windy and blustery and cold. People are going around begging food. Some maniac is actually running around holding up hot dog stands. Some other enterprising souls are out there selling glasses of water for a dollar. Well, what do you expect when you take a half a million New Yorkers out in the middle of a cornfield and strand them there for three days? We are all trapped in this quagmire and grisly mindset when the state of New York declares the place a disaster area. With stunt pilots buzzing the stage and army helicopters flying in with water, it's beginning to look and sound like Vietnam. And it's a high old crowd, actually. That's like Vietnam, too. Even the music reminds me of Vietnam. Jesus, my mind is snapping. Turns out someone dosed the water with hypodermics before they even got it loaded off the helicopters. So now even the army's water is loaded with acid. It's reckless and not too mature of whoever did it, I must say. Some of the chopper pilots are so fucked up that guides have to sit in on every flight and talk them down in more ways than one. Okay, now bring it down gently. Imagine you're a dragonfly and you're landing on this giant lily pad. Finally, the dead set finishes up with love light, but even Pigpen's surefire rabble rouser can't quite pull it out. Thank God that's over. We are walking across the area behind the stage and we run into one of the dead's roadies, Jonathan Reister. I'm talking to Reister when all of a sudden all the paisley washes out of his face. Ah, normalcy. I never thought I'd embrace it with such enthusiasm. In the summer of 1960,